Hey, deserving listeners, Love is Blind, After the Altar, new episodes. Let's watch. I'm Alexa's mom. You're empty. No, you're not. There's no right, that mom. What? That mom. Why do you look like you're the same age as Alexa? Because we basically we are. Because she is. But you're like really beautiful, and I just thought Alexa's mom would be the same age as my mom, because I'm the same age as Alexa. You're way younger than my mom. Cole, I need you to come with me right now. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awkward. I think they edited in Alexa's stepmom looking perturbed. That kind of is a, This show doesn't do that as often as 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day Fiance does this pretty much every scene. They will take three hours of footage and pick and choose whatever they want. And it's pretty obvious. And that looked pretty obvious to me. Was it awkward? Probably. <laughs> but I'm guessing the stepmom, Alexa's stepmom, was probably being nice and putting on a happy face and going, oh, that's nice of you. And it didn't really exhibit the true awkwardness that Cole was presenting right there. And now uh, Bartiz is pulling him away. So, yeah, interesting. I think he's drunk. <laughs> Doesn't excuse it, but I think that influences it. But, yeah, could Cole have said something like, oh, wow, uh, well... Even then, it's like, you know, she's stepmom. She's probably sensitive about being seen as Alexa's age or something. I don't know. It just, yeah. There's a lot of other things one could talk about in that situation. You probably, sh I don't know. It's possible that Alexa's mom would would appreciate maybe a compliment. Oh, wow. I mean, you look really young to be Alexa's mom or I don't know. There's just, uh, you could certainly say something like that, but then just move on. But then Cole doubles down and is like coming across like he's hitting on Alexa's mom. I don't think that's what's happening, but that, let's rewatch that. Why do you look like you're the same age as Alexa? Because we basically we are. Because she is. But you're like really beautiful. And I just thought Alexa's mom would be the same age as my mom because I'm the same age as Alexa. You're way younger than my mom. Cole, I need you to come with me right now. Sorry. Bye. You are not Alexa's mom. Yeah, this is reminiscent of when he just kept talking about Colleen around the pool scene. It's like he doesn't have a filter. He doesn't know when he's going too far. He doesn't pick up on social cues because there's a lot of indication, real overt indication from from Bartis that he should write immediately. Bartis is like, should be quiet, you know, he's, and... So what is that about? It's possible that he just is oblivious. I think that's certainly an option. And or he, Cole, has kind of a bone to pick with being told what to do. Some people are like that. Some people, because they were told what to do a lot, and it's possible, you know, when you think about the very little that we know about Cole's journey with his family, that his family might have been pretty strict and telling him what to do a lot, restricting him a lot, and Cole having seemingly recently broken free from his family, particularly around the Zeneb ceremony, right? He seemed to cross a line, some sort of threshold with his parents. And it's possible that when people tell Cole what to do, he by default just says, no, no one can tell me what to do because that's been going on throughout my whole life. And I have decided in this black and white point of view that it's always wrong when people tell me what to do. So I'm going to show people. Yeah, this is possible as well. I don't know. Either way, it's an issue. It's not a tremendous issue, but it's gonna. It's it's shoots him in the foot. It prevents him from, I think, getting to where he wants to go. Certainly, I don't think he wants to alienate everyone around him. That mom. Brennan, get, come on, dude. Come on, dude. Let's talk to Cole. Let's talk to Cole. Okay. Because I had to tell. Like, come, come over here. Let's go over here. All right. Interesting. So, Bartice is trying to broker a truce between Brennan and Cole. Let's see how this goes. Happy birthday to your wife. I seriously, congrats. It's y'all's marriage. Thank you. I mean, appreciate it. But what's up? I just, I'm not someone to get involved in someone else's relationship. Yeah. But at the same time, I didn't respect the way that things went down. From what I've known, okay. things were negative. Yeah. 
I think this is in line with what I was saying earlier that for Brennan, uh, he has heard a lot of very concerning things. When you hear, and I've said this many times, but when you hear Zeneb give her account of what happened, it's convincing, especially when Cole will say, well, yeah, I did say that. And then you see scenes where what Zeneb is saying is, act she's not lying. Zeneb doesn't just make stuff up, but the interpretation is the key. And Cole plays into easy interpretations of abuse because of the way he talks. It, he just puts his foot in his mouth a lot is the way I would put it. So if you're Brennan, then it would be pretty convincing, right? And also you're, influ you're influenced because you're married to Alexa, right? If you're Brennan and you don't want to create a rift uh, between you and your wife. So it would seem easier to close yourself off from any influence to the contrary, right? So, uh, you know, and Brennan could be right. It could be absolutely the ethical choice to reject Cole. Did Cole do some things that were uncool, unfair, hurtful, that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Were there things that he did that were aggravating and frustrating and would legitimately hurt anyone's feelings? And I've included, yeah, absolutely Cole did. Uh, so I'm not, it's not black or white, right? I feel like they're, uh, among the discourse and the discussions and the, the conversations around the show, it's like you're either team Cole, you're team Zenib. If you're not either one team, Team, then you hate both of them. And I would say there's a fourth option, which is uh, I'm neither Team Cole or Team Zeneb. I just see two totally normal human beings acting in totally normal ways that a lot of us do that results in a lot of hurt feelings and misinterpretation. It's normal. It's extremely normal, extremely mundane even. I don't see anything hateful or necessarily even likable about, about that. I mean, well, no, I'll take that back. I do see a lot of likable qualities in both of them, Zen and Cole, absolutely. So I'll say that. But if all that is true, then I would kind of, not as a therapist, but as a citizen, as a civilian, I would hope that Brennan and Cole could at least be cool with each other, but you know, the world doesn't always work out in the way that I want things to be. Doesn't matter. Well, yeah, okay, that aside, what, yeah, just, what you've heard, so I guess. No, what I know. Well, I don't know what you're referring to, but that, okay, that's what, what I'm referring to is you telling Zay that she's either too fat or she she eats too much or she's not your type or you fucking hitting on other people at different bars. That's what I'm referring. To. Right, and those are believable things given what we saw, given Cole's behavior towards Colleen, given the things that Cole would say, and it's up to the interpreter in terms of what Cole was saying, like when they were at the beach and. Is like you you're trying to get fat, or you know that that kind of stuff. Are you trying to fatten me up? I can't remember exactly what I said. So yeah, Brennan, given what he knows and given what he's heard, it stands to reason that Cole is a big jerk face and worthy of rejection. Today, and I am intending to be a better man. That's I don't what think I anybody think. fucking wakes up and tries to be a worse person, right? No. So you can wake up and intend to be a better person, but what the fuck have you done to be a better person? Right? Brennan has a bone to pick with me because of Alexa. I didn't do anything to Brennan. I didn't flirt with any girls. I will say that Cole, in, at least in front of Brennan, maybe not in this interview, Cole is doing pretty well. Uh, there's a, just imagine a lot of the other reality TV cast members that we watch on this channel, 90 Day Fiance included, where the person in Cole's position would not be as humble as he's being. Now, I don't know how long it's going to last, but, you know, Cole is listening and he's taking his lumps in his conversation with Brennan. And uh, at least so far, he's giving a lot of opportunity for Brennan to warm up or at least to begin a conversation. If Cole really wanted to change Brennan's mind, not to get him on his side, but to bury the hatchet, then I would guess that this would require, especially given the way Brendan is talking, a lot more conversations beyond a night where you're drinking and there's a lot of music in the background. That you know, so if Cole really wanted to say, "Hey, Brendan, is it okay if we talk a couple more times after this party?" You don't have to, but I, I just want you don't have to believe me or anything. But I, I just feel like I want to give my. You've heard her side. I, I just want to tell my side because it would mean a lot to me if you could just hear me out. You don't have to go along with me, but, and I'm not trying to manipulate anything. I don't want you to go against your wife or even against Zeneb. I, 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 but we were friends.
happens, and I just want to get it off my chest. There are a lot of examples where that sort of plan or request is healthy, right? Instead of, I don't care about, you know, if Cole really, I don't care about Brandon, he's a jerk face, I don't need him, okay? That's a defense. Or the other side to yell at Brandon and say, well, you're just a little P-whipped B or something. Yeah, there's a lot of different reactions that people will have in a situation like this that I think deny the reality. And I, I think Cole, given especially what we've seen in the interviews after the season, I, I think he's in a very normal way, very sensitive, and doesn't want people to hate him. And I think Brennan is in that category. I think it's also possible that he thinks, well, it's probably a lost cause trying to get Alexa on my side, but maybe I could get Brennan, not to cause a rift between Brennan and Alexa, but it just makes me feel bad that people are out there thinking bad thoughts about me. You know, that's a normal need that, that we have. So I think maybe that's what Cole is doing. It's real world accusations that never happen. And me and Brennan had no beef until Alexa got in his ear. And if you take care of your stuff, yeah. we'll come back around. All right, man. Okay? All right, bro. Good. Thanks for talking to me, bro. Solid? Yeah. And. Okay. Yeah. Good for them. And I'll applaud the show, Love is Blind, as well, for seemingly just letting the conversation go where it may. I'm guessing production might have coaxed the conversation to happen to begin with. But another show like 90 Day Fiance would have seemingly tried to get the two of them to start yelling at each other and create a whole scene, which would have played well with the audiences, but would have taken away from the authenticity of the show. The show is definitely influenced by the producers and influenced by the editors absolutely influenced by the cast members motivations themselves but it looks more authentic than a lot of other reality tv so that scene between cole and brennan played out the way that i would imagine a lot of these conversations would go in real life there's a similar scene between cole and matt during the season right where they were talking at a bar about the pool scene right and and cole was like no, Matt, let me tell you, that was all me. <laughs> I was talking about how beautiful Colleen was. Colleen was just being nice. And so you don't have anything to worry about with Colleen. You know, Cole was being a good guy in that situation. And Matt received it well and believed him and was comforted by that. You know, other shows, there would, you know, they'd really string it out. And the producers, I mean, I've literally heard from cast members on other shows where they might have a scene like that, where things just went that, like Cole and Brendan, where they have a conversation. Then the producers come over and they say, okay, let's reshoot that. And this time, maybe let's play around with it a little bit more. You know, how about we have a little bit more drama? I don't know what instructions they give, but they'll reshoot a scene. And if you're a cast member that's easily suggestible, you might say, oh, okay, well, I guess they're wanting us to to do more. And, you know, the more I think about it, actually, it's almost like a police interrogation in that for a lot of the cast members, it's uncomfortable to be forced to reshoot a scene, right? right? And you're being dangled as a carrot in front of you is money and maybe future iterations of the show, right? So if, for example, they go to, and the producers know this, they're like, I'm not gonna explicitly say this to the cast members, but it'll be implied that if they don't play ball, we're not gonna pay them as much and we're not gonna invite them back on future seasons, which is also a big paycheck for later, right? So I'm gonna suggest that they reshoot it and I'll, you know, I'm not gonna say directly that I want there to be a fight, but you know, they'll probably know that's what we're looking for, or at least a different version. Then they reshoot it maybe a second time and say the second time, there's still not a lot of drama. The producers come in again and say, hey, um, I think we're looking for a little bit more, you know, just just be a little bit more honest about things and let's, let's reshoot it. You keep doing that. It's similar to a police in interrogation where they're trying to get you to falsely confess. They're, you know, the police will say, did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? And you're like, no, I wasn't even in the same town. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do it. And the police are like, well, uh, okay. And then they, they just keep interrogating you and you're getting tired and hungry and uncomfortable and they're insulting you. They're not hitting you, but you feel scared. You just want to go home. And eventually you just figure out, uh, and the police will say, look, if you sign this confession, you're out. You got to go home. 
or if you sign this confession, we're gonna we'll give you this hamburger and fries and milkshake, and you'll be able to walk out of this police station, and everything's fine. After 12 hours of that, it's been shown research-wise that most people, if not everyone, will at the very least start to contemplate f- signing a false confession just so they can get out of the discomfort situation, disc- you know, the uncomfortable situation. So you're on the show, and you're just trying to get out of this scene. <laughs> you just want to move on with the night and you don't want to be filmed over and over and over again and put in this uncomfortable situation. Now, of course, the cast members want to be on camera. They wouldn't have gone on a reality TV show otherwise, but repeating a scene over and over again would, I imagine, be aggravating and and uncomfortable. So you can imagine the producers know that and they just keep shooting a scene with the implication of, if you create some drama, we'll move on. That will be the take that we'll use, and we'll stop doing takes. So I think that that might be another mechanism. Of course, I have no idea. This is all speculation. But I will say that what we just saw on this show seemed authentic. And it gives hope for humanity that two people, Brennan and Cole, could have a conversation like that and not have it become violent or accusatory or hostile or something. You know, it seemed to be a door open. Or maybe Brennan was just being polite. Maybe Brennan's just like, hey, you know what? I'll tell him this, but in reality, no, we're done. But, you know, I'll be polite in this situation. Like, don't even talk to him anymore. The part of me that can't let you go or that wants to believe in you or that wants to give you after the first time, the second time, the third mistake, right? Like, wants to give you another chance. They stepped in. And they were like, no. My argument to that is like... Yeah, it sounds like Nancy is saying that she's, you know, staying in contact with Bartice because she's hoping that they will be in a relationship together. I don't think she would rationally believe that to be true. But that's, you know, that's something that I don't get a chance to talk about, if ever, is that... It's a well-known phenomenon, and I'm sure y'all know about this. It's a common experience. You might have gone through it yourself or been the recipient of this kind of thing or had a friend like this, where against all rational thought, you have an individual like Nancy, maybe. I don't know if that's what's happening right now, but you have someone like Nancy who keeps trying to get back together with someone. They might not overtly say that, like, hey, let's get back together, but they just keep reaching out. They keep texting. They keep being friends. You know, often the bar Artistas of the world, the individuals who do the dumping, they feel bad. They feel like, oh no, I hurt someone's feelings and that feels bad to me. I, I don't want her to hate me. I don't want to feel guilty about that. And so the Bartizas of the world have at least part of their motivation in this situation to be friends is along those lines. They can say, well, if I can if we can be friends, then I will feel less guilt about what I did in terms of dumping her. Also, I think the Bartises of the world, usually when they're befriending, it's because of what I was saying earlier, which is that often when you have a bond and you have a friendship and a romantic connection, a sexual connection, when the romantic connection and sexual connection ends, you still have that friend bond, potentially, not always, but you could see how Bartise would still consider Nancy to be a good person, a good friend, someone that he wants to at the very least have a an amicable post-relationship, you know, kind of a friendship afterwards, at least being cordial to each other. But anyway, so I think that for the Bartises of the world, they have various different motivations like that. But it, there's a, it's a well-known phenomenon that for some people in Nancy's shoes, they will have this almost delusional hope that one day the relationship will be rekindled and they'll just stay in this limbo space for a long period of time. Now, some of this might be necessary in order for Nancy to wrestle with what she needs to wrestle with in order to process what's happening and truly move on. That's okay. But for some people in Nancy's shoes, they'll stay in this mode for years and years where on the surface they're like, no, you know, we're just friends. That, that's fine. But deep down, they're still pining. They're still hoping, even though it's not healthy for them to do so. And they might engage in other romantic relationships, but they're not really committed. They're not really handing themselves over freely to these other people because most of their heart is still uh, pointing in this other direction. So Nancy could be in that zone, at least temporarily, which again, isn't I wouldn't call that a problem. I would call that a temporary, like we could imagine, like say that Nancy's in that situation right now and she's wrestling with those feelings and intellectually she's like, I don't want to be with him. It's not going to work out anyway. 
but part of her heart is still kind of tricking her to stay in contact and accommodate and da da da. And she might even have like pseudo sentences in her mind around like, well, you never know what would happen. You know, we might get back together. He did love me. He did want to be with me and I haven't met anyone. You know, anyway, so, and then through this process, she really learns that no, this isn't gonna work. And I have to start to uh, learn to accept what the reality is here. And I have to start to grieve and I have to start to feel sad and cry and, have all the emotions that are waiting for me in the wings <laughs> regarding my grief. So it, it's possible. Like, you don't know what Nancy is going on in here, and you don't know what's going on in my head, you don't know what we went through, you don't know what we're trying to do, you don't know where we've been and what we can we can do. So you can listen to what all they say, right, and take it with a grain of salt. There's another possibility that Bartice is continuing his trickery and deception of Nancy, giving her the impression. It wouldn't be strange for us to imagine that happening given what he did prior to the altar. And he seemed to be doing it right here a little bit. He drops a phrase like, they don't know what we could be. Why would you, why would you say that, especially in that context? and not clarify. And by the way, by what I what could be, I want to be clear, that's, you know, good friends. I'm not saying romantic anything. I don't know. It's it's hard to know, but it's possible that Nancy is being harmed and tricked in, in that way as well. And who knows what's happening over text and behind the scenes. I don't know. Uh, protect herself because she doesn't want to look like the dumb ex that keeps running back to me. I care about you because we shared a lot of our lives together. And even though we ended badly at the end of the experiment, we reconnected after and we had a what could have been a decent relationship as friends moving forward. It did Okay, that was more clear. A decent relationship as friends moving forward. There's another possibility that Bartis, and this does kind of fit with his, with his presentation. I, of course, can't know if this is true. That for Bartis, it's an ego boost to have a woman around him who has a secret crush or a secret pining for him. And that's why he's extra interested. I don't want to think that that's the main motivation. It could be there. I want to imagine that for Bartise, the main reason why he wants to be friends is the way that a lot of people want to be friends with their former partners. It's because you have a connection. You were part of your relationship was a friendship, was mutually supportive, was having fun together. In addition to that, you had romance and sexuality, but you did enjoy each other's company. You did respect each other. You liked talking with each other. And having a good friend is hard to come by. So retaining those friendships are important and healthy. So I want to think that's why he's doing it, but who knows? What do you think? Did not work out that way at first. Recognize that you were unkind to right. me. More than you were kind to me. Okay. You need to tell me right now, you decide right now, what do you want us to be going forward? Are we gonna be friends or no? No. Does it make sense? Yeah, I mean, it, it stands to reason. I think it's possible that for Nancy, it's too much of a temptation or too hurtful. I think the way that the show is trying to at least introduce the concept that Bartise is standing up to Bartise, that's not the way that I would see this, unless you believe that Bartise is manipulating her. I think it's just one of those conversations that you have. It's the, often the person that was dumped will have a harder time being friends. And so... It's a thing that people will say, just like, yeah, I'm sorry, I know you want to be friends with me, and I, I know I'm kind of dumping you as a friend in this moment, but I, it's not healthy for me to, to do that. I, I can't do that. Yeah, makes sense. All right, Nancy. Hasta luego. Yeah. I don't want to have friendships that don't help me grow, that don't support me, that don't love me. Although we have a past, although we had some good times, like I want someone to be obsessed with me, love me for who I am and what I offer. And yeah, that sounds like not a friendship, <laughs> Nancy. It sounds like you're wanting, you're using the word friendship in place of I want a boyfriend. Let's re let's re-listen to that. I don't want to have friendships that don't help me grow, that don't support me, that don't love me. Although we have a past, although we had some good times, like I want someone to be obsessed with me, love me for who I am and what I offer. And in the long run, the benefit of him being in my life is minute. You know what I mean? I don't know, they edited it a little bit seemingly, but it sounds like at least in her conceptualization, her vibe around 
what she was seeking with him. The word that she's using is friendship because that makes rational sense. But I think underneath that was wanting to re-engage with him. You know, I don't think any any of us would say, yeah, I want a friend that's obsessed with me. <laughs> that's literally what she just said, or the way they edited it, which is totally fine. It's totally healthy and normal to have that ambiguity even 12, I don't know how long this has been, but I think it's been about a year since the altar or a number of months. Totally normal, not pathological, not strange, not weak. It's normal, but I don't know. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Am I, am I hearing this wrong or right? Oh, he should go. It was so empowering to just be like, fuck. Like, I really yeah, need to be like, where I'm at. I'm excited to start dating again. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.